Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Joystick Heroes by Frown Clowns. This is a 2-6 to six player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to play and is for ages 8 and up. And in the game Joystick Heroes, you are going to be going back to one of your old retro style arcades and playing the arcade games. Your objective? To score the most points on each machine and earn prizes. You can get tickets, which you can use to spend for prizes, or you can just simply earn prizes if you get a high score. You'll be selecting one of them, rolling these dice based on your stats, your character's skills, and the different types of activities and genres. And if you can get the eight points required on the dice, you will score a certain score, and that score will give you tickets and or prizes. And you'll pass uh, the turn, and players are gonna go around in a circle and play the games. Some games are co-op, some games are competitive, and others you just simply play solo. You'll also be utilizing powers that you're gonna be getting from this deck over here that's going to let you play certain games better than you normally would, re-roll your dice, and other cool unique little things, like an all-play challenge. But basically, by the time your tokens run out, if you have the most prizes, you're the winner of the game. It's pretty simple and straightforward, a unique little blast from the past. Let's take a look at how to set the game up, and of course, how to play, and finally, my review. Setting up the game Joystick Heroes is actually quite simple. The first thing you'll do is you will take the silver and gold games cards, shuffle them up together, and then deal out six within reach and view of all players. Then you'll take the power deck and shuffle it up as well. Give each player a player board along with six of the red cubes. Place one of those red cubes in each of the skill slots on the bottom, and then the remaining two you can place in any of the genre areas that you would like, and you should check the board to see what the best ones are. Give every single player 10 co coins, which is going to be used to play games. Give them a player reference and their character, along with three random power cards from the top of the deck. After that, give the first player the pizza token and set aside all the tokens, be it tickets, extra coins, the dice, and the prizes, along with those red power cubes that you'll be using, and begin the game with that pizza player. A turn of Joystick Heroes is actually quite simple. You'll take your character and you'll choose one of the games available. From there, you'll place that character there along with one token at the bottom of that game to symbolize that not only you're taking your turn and you're only gonna get 10 turns in the game, but also that that game is being used. Then, you're going to go ahead and check your skills and your genre cubes, and you'll check the categories on the card. One joystick will grant me one die. I also have one double, I also have one of the targets, which will get me another one, and finally, I have a double aliens, so I'm going to get two of these black die. After you get your black die, you're also gonna take the white die. You'll always use this die, and then you're gonna roll. Your objective when rolling or playing a game is to get the highest score possible. The more points you score, the more tickets you can earn, and if you can get that high score, you can also get prizes. You'll take these die, then you're gonna roll them, and you're going to check the value. If the value reaches or exceeds a certain area, that is the prize you're going to take. So in this case here, I've got four, five, and six, which is gonna be over the 400, but not over the 700, so I would net two tickets. However, when you roll this white die, there's unique things that can happen. The key is going to let you discard one of your power cards in order to use the top left hand location icon, which is gonna give me two extra points or extra points or 100 extra points or a free ticket. And the heart is actually what I call an exploding die. It's going to let you take this one and another black die, if you would like, and roll them again to score additional points. And like here, now I have two, four, six, eight, 900 points, which is gonna get me past that 400 range into the 700 range and score me three tickets. After you've achieved a certain amount of points based on the game, you're going to score the prizes. So in this case, for me, it's going to be three of these wonderful tickets. If you score the high score, so if I scored 1,100 points in this game, I would get the top prize and also the game is going to go away. I would discard the game and I would draw a new game from the deck and replace it. If you don't, you leave it there. Games will only go away if three coins have been used on them or after the third, or if the high score has been reached. After your turn is over and you've chosen not to play any cards because you can play cards during combat, these power cards and whatnot, some of them are gonna give you additional dice or change the way the white die goes or additional die for certain genres, then if you have less than three cards in your hand, you'll draw a card and you can go ahead and use your tickets to do one of three things. You can either A, spend three tickets to get a red cube and place it in any one of the four skills. You can spend two tickets to give yourself one cube in any genre that you'd like, or you can spend five tickets to to give yourself a prize. And these prizes are the most important thing in the game because whoever has the most at the end is the winner. But 
the early game, you're going to want to be gathering these tickets to give yourself skills and genres in order to give yourself a boost in when you roll the die to get higher scores. You can also choose to just do none of that and save the tickets and then your play will pass to the next player. And they will once again do that, do same thing as well. The only thing that's unique about this game as far as uh, turns changing is you can never go on the same space as another player unless stated otherwise. If you choose to go on something like, oh, I don't know, the uh, golden areas, or the golden games, the rare ones, instead of playing the game and just rolling the dice and seeing what you get, you're trying to complete complete levels. You'll roll the die based on the same criteria, and if you can complete the first level, getting that number of points, you can move on to the next, and then the next, and uh, if you've beaten the third level, you'll get either the level three prize, or if your points are higher than that, high enough to hit that top score, you get the top prize. So you can kind of get cumulatively better card or better scores and thusly score points, but you'll roll dice multiple times as opposed to the silver games. Another thing to note in the game is not only um, and do these games play solo, but they can play competitively or cooperatively. Uh, and competitively, somebody can spend a coin and join you in the game and play against you. You'll both score, however, the person who has the higher score is also going to get two tickets. And then the cooperative one allows you to give a player a ticket and use one of their skills in order to grant you additional die for that game. And if you get a high score, you'll give them even more tickets from the pool. But otherwise, that's a basic idea of the game. You'll use your power cards when you can. They're going to give you bonuses and powers and abilities. You'll use your genres and skills slots that are going to grant you additional dice as you progress throughout the game. The game is going to end when all players have no more coins left. Once all the coins have been reduced to zero, then you're going to check and see who has the most of the prizes. The duckies, the teddy bears, etc., etc. These are the little prizes that you would get in an arcade. And if you have the most, you are the winner. If you're tied, you'll go on to another round, um, do this kind of like finally thing where somebody can net the, the goal for the most points. It plays up to six players and it functions just as you see here regardless of the number of players. And that's basically the game. Joystick Heroes is a luck mitigation game. It's all about choosing a location based on your skills and your genres that are located on your player board and then attempting to roll die and score the points that you receive. Uh, you can roll all zeros, you can roll all 300s and 200s, and there's a huge amount of luck involved in that. However, the mitigation comes in the types of skills and genres that you choose at the beginning of the game and as well as as you progress throughout the game, selecting new ones or utilizing your tokens for a bunch of these prizes. Now, if you do not gather enough of these cubes on your board as the game progresses, you might be able to buy a certain number of prizes, but the game's going to be as progressively difficult at the beginning as it will be at the end. Other things you can do is kind of upgrade yourself as you progress, giving yourself new uh, dice that you can utilize that can improve yourself and kind of make things easier. And certain games will be easier than others based on their genre and the different types of skills that are required to play the game. Using these power cards are nice. They're all going to be beneficial and useful, some better than others. Some of them that are better are going to have a better key value, but you'll have to use that key value when you roll the key as opposed to using the actual card. And of course, if you use all your cards, you're only going to be getting one per turn, so you have to kind of decide when it's best to do so. The also little additional strategy in the game is playing cooperatively and competitively against each other. Sometimes it's better to net those extra points if you think you can beat someone. Other times it's better to give people tickets in order to receive additional tickets for a game you normally couldn't beat. And that adds just an extra little tinge of difficulty. And you don't have to play that if you don't want. It's one of those things that's added to the game, but if you don't want to play the competitive cooperative little aspects, which is literally just a little symbol on the top of the card here, you can kind of ignore that. Uh, my suggestion is you play with it, and people who do not want to do that just don't have to do it. There's no cost uh, to not actually choosing to do it, uh, but it might be a benefit to do, and after you see enough people do it, it might be worth trying. Uh, there's, of course, a ton of strategy in choosing certain locations uh, on this board here. If you choose Space Invader type games, and then maybe you choose to do the sports games, you're going to have a bad time when it comes to your swords. Now, in this deck of cards, you're going to be running through not only the silver, but the gold uh, arcade objectives. And if, if you get unlucky and uh, you see a bunch of, I don't know, aliens to begin with, and then they never show up again, and all you did was put all your dice into aliens, you're probably going to slow down, and it's kind of a ramp-up style game. This game has the uh, ability to kind of boulder, like a boulder rolling down a hill up to the point where you can't actually stop the person from winning if you were too slow in choosing your strategy or you got really bad die rolls, and that can happen in this game. It, it, it's it's luck-based, uh, but 
Is that a bad thing? No. And is there a mitigation amount involved in this game that makes it change? Yes. Uh, but all in all, if you do not get the rolls you need, you're not going to survive. But I just really dug this game. I liked the amount of strategy that was inputted into the game. I liked how people were working together in, in certain ways to cooperate in certain games or compete in certain games, utilizing tokens. It, it has the feel of going to a retro arcade and choosing your games. And sometimes I've wanted to choose certain games just because I like the idea of them, even though they didn't benefit me in dice. I didn't do that because that's a terrible strategy, but it's one of those things where just noticing all these different games where it kind of reminds you of the different style. Like, Titan Rage, you kind of know what game that might be from. It's got dinosaurs on it. Um, so it has these different styles and genres and whatnot of games that you might have heard of in the past. So let's, let's go over the categories. One, quality of the game. This game has great quality. The tickets are fun, they're useful, and you want to spend them. The coins are going to be inserted into the games and it feels like you're attempting to play them while rolling the dice. Yes, they all pretty much play the same way, except for the gold ones play different than the silver, but for the most part, you're rolling dice and trying to get the high score. Uh, the dice themselves, generally speaking, you're going to get a positive result on the black ones and there's a possible zero and on the special white one you can get negatives you can get positives you can get the key and you can get exploding dice i always love exploding dice in games and this one does a great job of that and giving you the option of rerolling this die can be positive and benef beneficial depending on how lucky you want to be because you can get yourself negative points with this die if you want to reroll it if maybe you got a hundred or maybe you got a key and you didn't want to use those and so kind of the choice becomes up to you um, playing with your player board, all players are basically the same. The difference is where you choose to increase your stats and where you start your stats off at the beginning of the game. I would like to actually see each character have their own unique twist to them, have their own unique ability or objective in the game. In fact, maybe even a, an objective-based idea at the end. If you score these type of games, maybe have a, the games each have their own unique category, that would be really cool. Um, something that kind of set that aside in a different way. I also want to see additional new games that come out, different types, silver and gold, and maybe something else, something that's a, a full cooperative or full competitive games where you, everybody has to jump in. And there is some of that in the power cards here as well. There's going to be cards that are going to make you do, um, uh, what is it called? Everybody has to, a, a tournament all play card in which you can go ahead and check the Kickstarter to see how that works. And there's like instant replays and 500 on the, on the button. Things that make you change your score in order to score additional points is also really cool. Uh, there is some additional stuff that I know that I have in the game that I've kind of looked at and took a but but it's one of those like Kickstarter stretch goals things, so I'm not going to get too in depth with it because we'll see how it goes with there. But that's kind of what I was hoping for in this game was extra cool things like that with their. Imp, imp, they're trying to imp implement as well. And I wanna see those as well. Additional cool games, character unique powers. But I mean, overall, it's a fun dice chucky game. It's kind of feels like, I don't know, King of Tokyo-ish, one of those like Yahtzee style playing games um, with a cool retro feel and theme. All the artwork is super cool. The character design is fun. And the game is one of those things where you sit down and you see the game being played and it's something you wanna check out. It's got a really strong table presence and the quality is great. If I were to see this game, I would want to play it. I'm one of those players who really, really enjoyed those old classic arcade school style games. And when I jumped on this one, I saw this. I wasn't sure what I was going to expect from a game that involves going to an arcade and playing games. But now that I've played it, I definitely suggest it. Does this game play well two players? Yes, I had a lot of fun playing this two players. Usually games that run two to six, I'm not a huge fan of playing the two or even three player var variants, is what I even call them. I usually like to play more. And in most cases, yes, playing more players with this game is probably going to be more fun. It's always more fun to have more players. But I had a two, uh, had played, two played, a, played a two player experience and it was pretty cool, uh, definitely luck based. And with more players, it comes a little bit more interesting uh, things that can happen and new cards can be played and things can happen in change, um, but overall a solid fun game. I would highly recommend Joystick Heroes for anybody who is an arcade lover. Definitely take a look at this game on the Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Joystick Heroes by Frown Clowns. If you want, like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. Speaking of videos like this one, check out our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games very similar to this and in fact, maybe even this game itself. So you can see the game and determine for yourself if it's something that you'd like to pick up and it's worth playing for you. You can also go ahead and check out the website 
website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. It's all there with our writers where we have people review games that aren't the ones that you see on these videos, so you can have different types of content from different types of people as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to going to the old style classic arcades or even Dave and Buster's with you next time. I mean, I really like Dave and Buster's. My wife got to go a couple weeks ago and it made me sad that I wasn't able to go. So I've just been thinking about that a lot. <laughs>